guns fell on him. The spirit it came down. He began to write about the things he saw. Of every letter wrote it down. John the Revelator saw Jerusalem coming down. John the Revelator, and when he looked around, saw peace like grass. I saw, saw, heard a great voice saying, "Come."
thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Not always understand everything that's going on. But we can trust Him for everything and every situation. No matter what we might be facing, no matter what we might be going through, we can trust Him today. Thank you, Jesus. If you've got the Bible, and I trust you do. Oh, listen to the book to the Gospel of Matthew. To the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6. Verse 6. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 6. Thank you, Father, for your word today. If you would stand for the reading of God's word, we may stand in this go to the Lord in prayer. Matthew, chapter 6, verse 6. But if, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, Pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. I'm going to read that verse again. But when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father in secret which is in secret, and thy Father which is in secret, in secret shall we board thee openly. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. Father, I thank you that your word is anointed, that there is nothing impossible for you. I thank you, Father, that your word is still true. Your promises are yea and amen, that, Lord, you're still more than able to do all things. Father, I ask you today to hide me behind the cross. Father, that your word would go forth. And Father, that you would give us the word that you would have for the hour. God, indeed, indeed, towards our hearts today. Lord, as we come before you. Father, I ask that Lord, you would anoint my words. That I may speak the words that you would have me to speak. And Father, that we would go away from you. Having received the word from you today. We'll give you praise for what you're about to do. In Christ's most holy name we pray and ask, amen and amen. amen. May be seated. <laughs> Jesus is talking here and he has just told his disciples about prayer. He is talking to him, uh, uh, the chapter 6 is found in the Sermon on the Mount. He has spoke to them about many different things. He is, this is at the beginning of his ministry. And he has given them some guidelines. And in this chapter, this chapter, he begins to talk to them about prayer. And he tells them to enter into their secret closet. Friend, I'm going to talk to you tonight about, or today about the secret closet. About some of the benefits we receive when we get along with God and we begin to get, get, get a hold of him. The first benefit we receive is the fullness of joy when, that, when we go into our secret closet. In the book of Psalms, chapter 16, verse 11, the, the psalmist wrote, Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. There is so much sadness and heartache that's going on today. There is so many that are looking for joy and there are ways to try to find. There are many today that are trying to find a joy that will not satisfy in things that will not satisfy in things that will not last. But there is a joy that can be 
be found only as we spend time in the presence of God Almighty. There is a joy that cannot be explained when we get a hold of Him and we get into His presence. In the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 10, the last half of that verse says, For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We've got to realize that joy is a feeling of great pleasure and happiness or delight. The Bible tells us to delight ourselves in the Lord, and He will give us the very desires of our hearts in the book of Psalms, chapter 37, when we begin to delight in Him. Oh, and if we need strength today, uh, which is my next point, uh, but oh, if there's ever been a time we need strength, people today don't realize they're missing out on strength. We need not only physical strength, but spiritual strength. In the book of Isaiah chapter 40, starting with verse 28, it says, Hast thou not known Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the end of the earth, is the end of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no substance uh, of his understanding. Uh, he giveth power to the faint, uh, and to them that have no might, uh, he even he increases strength. Uh, even the youth uh, shall faint uh, and be weary, uh, and the young men shall utterly fall. Uh, you know, the other time, we, we all get tired in our bodies at times. We all get worn down and everything else. I mean, people today don't understand it. These, these young people crack me up when they say, Oh, I'm so tired, and they about done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. My, my father in law is 83, 84, 83. 83 years old. I'm 51. He puts me the same at times. I, I don't do nearly as much as he does. There's a lot of younger people than I am. They don't do nearly as much. I mean, with, even with all his problems, he is still in very good health. I know a preacher down in Sydney, Florida, 92, fixed to be 94 years old, still pastor, still going to class. So I said, I have nothing to do with it. There is strength in the presence of God. We will get tired at times. We will get weary at times. But we must understand that in the twelve closets, we will find a strength that cannot be explained. Verse 31 of that chapter says, With a day that wait upon the Lord, shall we do their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. If we are there up in a time that we need the strength of God, it's today. In the book of Psalms, chapter 46, verse 10, we are encouraged to be still and know that I am God. Oh, if we could ever get still before him. None of us like to get still in the days that we're living, though. None of us like to get still before him. To be still uh, in the Greek means to relax, to let drop, to let go, or to be silent. To wait means to stay and delay action. We live in a microwave society today. We don't know what it means really to get still before God. We don't know what it means to wait before God. We, we got everything today instant. Most of you in here know, probably know the, what it's like to cook a meal from scratch. Many of y'all young generation don't know what it's like to cook a meal from scratch. We, they got these microwaves that they put the food in. 
Oh, did everything to go in almost instantly. But we have got the will's eyes. It takes time to wait on God. If we want to find that joy and that strength that we need today, to face the devil, to face the enemy of our soul, we're going to have to begin to learn to get into his presence on a daily basis and wait before him. This is why Jesus, this is just one of the rewards that Jesus is talking about. About when we enter into our secret prayer closet, the strength in the Greek means the capacity of an object of substance to withstand great force or presence. Oppression. Now, that is part of our here. The emotional or mental quality necessary in dealing with situations or events that are distressing and difficult. Oh, friend, there were times that we were going to go through faith and set down right to stress. I mean, we are pushed beyond measure in our workplace. We get under so much stress, so much anxiety. Things sometimes just ain't going right. We got family that we're worried about. I mean, if you ever really see the time, well, we're almost afraid to send our kids to school, even living in the community we are now. And there was in a time where we're almost afraid to, to, uh, to do about anything. The crime and the things we hear, we used to hear about, like in New York or Los Angeles, or, but no, no more, it's just here, here in our own back doors now. That's right. If there ever been a time we need strength, it is today. If there's ever been a time we need the strength of God to help us, it is in the day that we're living. And it's only going to come, that strength uh, is only going to come uh, as we get into his presence uh, and as we begin to linger uh, and wait before him. Uh, if we want to know the fullness of joy and if we want to know the fullness of strength uh, that will pass all understanding, we have got to learn to get before him. Mm-hmm. Next benefit of uh, Getting before God and waiting before Him in a peace that passes all understanding. Yes. Oh, my, I said there will be a time we need peace today. In the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, it says, Be careful or be anxious for nothing, but in everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace that we're talking about is the transfer strength of a soul, a soul of salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God and content with us in totally light of what the will of thought that is. We mean to have a mental calm or serenity about us. If there ever been a time that we need to have a peace of God in the day. If there ever been a time that we need to have a peace that will pass all understanding in the day. If there ever been a time we need to experience that peace uh, that will pass and will understand and it's the day that we live. We, we live in very uncertain times. We don't know what might happen, what might take place. We don't know, we, we, I mean really we talked about security earlier, Psalm 91, about security earlier. Most of our doors today, you know, locks really are not to keep the bad guys out of this. All locks really do is just keep the honor for the man. We're living in days we don't know when someone might come back to them. We're living in a day when we don't know when a phone call might come at 10, uh, 11, 12, 3 o'clock in the morning, whatever time. We're living in a day where peace is being interrupted so much, uh, where things are happening so much. Uh, we don't know if a thing is going to happen. 
but there is a peace uh, that will pass all understanding. It will only come as you and I get into the prayer closet and as you and I spend time alone with a loving Heavenly Father who hears and knows every care that we might have if he did care, the Bible says he cares for the raven, for the fowl of the air. How much more does he not care for you and I if we were there to get a hold of the promise of him and know that we can have a peace today that will pass in our understanding that this world can never know we got a peace today that no good can give we got a peace today that alcohol cannot give we got a peace today that immoral activity cannot give we got a peace today that can, this world knows nothing about it's only only comes uh, from a walking relationship, daily relationship uh, with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Uh, it's a peace that will keep you and I in the very midst uh, of plenty of storms uh, that are going on around. Mm-hmm. Back in 03, I, 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 I started having some chest pain. I had to have to open, have open heart surgery. Someone asked me after my surgery, said, did you get scared? I said, no, I didn't get scared at all. I, and I really did. I mean, I, I, I was, when I was riding down in the center, I was praying to God, you know, down to the father, my parents, they were following everything. I didn't get scared at all. But the secret I believe was this. I believe God was trying to take me away from my father. A few weeks prior, we had a whole week of prayer. We went every night and, and we would pray for however long we're going to pray. And, and I believe that it was from that nightly prayer that that's what held me over, that I really wasn't afraid of anybody. Because that is the kind of peace I'm talking about. That we can have and only turn from a daily relationship with Jesus. Now don't keep me wrong, I'm not saying that you won't never wonder about things. I'm not saying we won't never have fear in our life. I mean David had fear in his life. We see it. But I am saying there was a peace that will come that we can have that this world cannot give and we'll never know about. There was a peace that we can have in the, from the Daily prayer closet. How uh, do we get it before God? Not only do we get that peace, not only can we have a joy that passes all understanding, not only can we have a strength that will get, that will get, give us and power us uh, to be the men, the women that we need to be uh, on a daily basis. Not only can we have peace uh, to face the storms, the trials, the temptations of life, uh, but through the prayer, daily prayer, uh, in the prayer closet, uh, will provide us with guidance. Open a few words in your Bibles and read with me in Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, starting with verse 14, tells us, Seeing then that we have a great high priest talking about Jesus that is passed into the heaven. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. We've got a great high priest that's going on before us in the book of Romans 8, in the verses we read in Sunday school. I can't remember exactly what the verse number was. But it says that he is still making intercession for you and I. He is making... Uh, let me tell that thing. I, 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 I was listening to a YouTube video and I sometimes read the comments. Somebody said they had to quit listening to the message I was listening to. Yeah, because the person was teaching a brand new doctrine. The new doctrine that they never heard of was that Jesus was up there making intercession. 
The first said and that and mom is tapped away. <laughs> He's making in a session. That's right. It ain't a new doctor. He is making in a session at our high priest. But let us hold fast our profession. Verse 15, for we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our informant. But when in all points tempted life as we are, yet without sin, we've got one who knows what you and I are going through. If we can ever just really grasp that, Jesus Christ, we know, was the Son of God. He is the Son of God. He was fully divine. He is fully divine. But if we could ever realize and understand, He was also fully human. He knew what it was like to be hungry. He knew what it was like to be distant, to be to be hurt. He knew what it was like to be thirsty. He knew what it was like to be betrayed. Remember his 12 closest disciples betrayed him. He knew what it was like to have people say all kinds of things against him. He knew what it was like to face all these temptations. He knew what it was like for family and friends to say he was crazy. And it's in there, Mark chapter 3. Can't remember the exact verse. The Bible says, a Said that his family come and said and family and friends said he's beside himself. Oh, he's crazy. He's really what he say. I mean, none of us like to have people say stuff about us like that. But he knew what it's like. He knew what it's like to have someone beat you, have someone spit in your face because he had someone literally spit in his face. He knew what it was like to have a whip laid across his back. He knew the pain, the suffering that you and I go through. He knew what, what we face and temptation because the Bible says he was tempted in all ways as we all yet without sin. And because of that, he knows how to deliver you and I from temptation. He knows what you and I are facing. I'm on Facebook a lot, and there's a pic. I, 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 I wish I could get it sometimes printed out. And the picture shows a man sitting, it shows a man and Jesus sitting in a cell. And it shows Jesus, you know, after he's been beaten and he's got the crown of thorns on him, he's all bloody and everything. And you see the nails of God prints in his hands, and you know, blood all over him, and everything. And he's sitting there listening to this guy. And the caption of the picture says, that moment when you're trying to explain to Jesus just how rough of a time you all have it, and he just don't understand. How often are we guilty of that? We try to tell Jesus, but Lord, you just don't understand. Yes, he does understand. He knows what we're going through. He knows what you and I, he knows what we're facing. If we could ever just understand that, we've got a high priest who knows what you and I are facing. And because of that, Paul says in the next verse, verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly and courageously without fear, unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. If we could ever, oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. There were times that we go through things that sometimes we don't know what. And it's good we can call prayer partners, prayer warriors, it's good we can call people that have to help us pray. But there are times that you and I have got to get along with God. And we have got to say, Lord, I need your help in this matter. 
I'll need your guidance in this matter. That's when if we would listen to him, he will come. He will help us to understand what we need to do and what path to take. He will show us the way we need to do. go. Too often we're looking for a wet say it's filling so instead of just trusting the simplest instructions that God would have us to do. If we could ever understand that he is ready, willing to help us in our very dark time of need, we can know beyond any shadow of a doubt he is more than able that we can trust him in the day and the time that we're living. We can trust him that my wife doesn't want to go. We can trust him in our situation, in our circumstance. <coughs> Excuse me. It was saying that we have in life, we can put our full trust in him. Amen. We teach our kids in the day we're living not to trust strangers. We, talk, we, we tell them stranger things is what we call them. There hasn't many times once they don't need to be trusted or people that we think they should know to, or they do know to some extent. But friend, there is one that we can trust yes, that will never fail us. Yes, the government will fail us as much as I hate to say it. The government will fail us. We cannot always depend on it. The stock market will fail us. It's going to go down one day if we're putting our trust in it. Money will fail us if we're putting our trust in it. Family and friends, though they may not mean to, though they may not ever intend to, they will fail us eventually. And the devil will most gladly fail you. He ain't going to help us, period. There is one. Oh, my. <laughs> there is one who will never fail you and I. He will never forsake you and I. He will never let us down. We can put our full trust in him. We can put our full faith in him. He is bold and able to help you and I in the very darkest time of our need. When we might not know what to do and we don't know which way to go or which way to turn. We can put our trust in him today. If we will lean heavily upon him, he is bold and able, he is bold and able to do that which we might think, think or imagine, far above what we could ever think or imagine. He is bold and willing uh, if we were there to put our trust in him today. Yes. Stand if you would. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word. Master, I thank you that we can put our trust in you. Father, we're living in an uncertain time and in an uncertain day. But Father, you have said in your word that if we would enter into our prayer closet, in secret. Father, you will reward us openly before all. Father, you said in that prayer closet in your presence with the fullness of joy that this world has never known and never will know. In your presence, Father, we will find strength to faith each and every day. In your presence, in your presence alone, we will find the strength that we need to, to go day by day. Oh, and Father, in your presence, we will find peace. Even though things around us may be falling apart, even though everything around us may be coming down, 
Even though there might be trouble in the life all around us, you said if we could find a peace that it would pass all understanding. A peace that this world cannot give, and a peace that this world can in no way, shape, or form take away. Now, Father, you said you gave us a promise. In your presence we can find a help. We can find a friend that will sit closer than a brother. And we can find a help in this day. Oh God, you said you've given us your word that you would help us if we were there to believe and there to ask. Father, you see my friends here today. Father, you see and heal each need that has been said. Father, you see the heartache that I don't know that is going on, but you know. Oh, precious Master, would you stretch forth your hands even now? Would you touch? Would you minister? Move by the power. Father, that you would heal. God and lead, strengthen and empower us today. Father, give us a peace. A peace that passes all understanding. Father, we'll be careful. Give you the praise, the glory for us. Lots of the holy name. Father, for it that we walk in that peace that will draw me into you. It will make people hungry and want to know more about you. Father, we give you praise for it. In the name that is above every name. In the precious, precious name of Jesus, we pray and ask these things. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you.